I'm Kevin Beck, explainer of things, and this is what goes into a ThinkPad. What is the best ThinkPad? I always answer, the ThinkPad coming out next is my favorite. So these are all covers uh, from a T series right. laptop, uh, and I'll just point out. So this is how they've evolved over time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's from four years ago. Okay. This one is uh, two and three. No, three years. Ago. So T four thirty, T four forty, and T four fifty. Okay. So this would have been twenty thirteen, roughly 2012, 2013. 2014, 2015, and this is 2016, 2017 right. of our Fin and Light T series. Right. Um, and you can see, I mean, there's a consistency. It the hinges have it moved. Doesn't look as well, yeah. Um, but if you can sort of look at the side, you can see that this has gotten thinner and lighter. Absolutely. As yeah. we've been able to bring this technology sort of more into mass production, mm -hmm. um, increase the mill spec testing. So this, the the newer ones actually pass more tests than the older right. ones. Right. Right. This is a slightly older sheet, I think, of this generation mm -hmm. of the carbon fiber. Okay. So that's two layers of carbon fiber on top, two layers at the bottom, with okay. a layer of shock absorbing foam in the middle. Right. Wow. Okay. It's, it's pretty, pretty thin. I mean, that's a lot thin. of layers and... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this is not a completely uh, direct comparison uh, because this is a... Uh, a it, but it's pretty much the same size right. is what I'm trying to say. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same size. So that's aluminum. So feel the difference between well, heavier. and weight between Whoa, those two. Yeah. That's and 81 here and that's 210 over there. It's yeah. a massive difference. Yeah. And they're pretty much the same uh, thickness, is it? Yeah, pretty much. That's mm -hmm. what I was trying to say. They're not exactly the same, but as close as our team mm -hmm. could get for demo purposes. Mm -hmm. But look at that. So in the course of various demonstrations over the past two or three years, I've dropped a billiard ball uh -huh. on these, I believe, exactly the same number of times. Wow. I could see the dents there. I can't see anything here. Yeah. Now, if you look really close, you can see that it has dented the top. Yeah. yeah. But here's the key thing. It doesn't punch through to the bottom. Right? It doesn't break the screen. And that's why we use the carbon fiber. So if we can make the thing last longer by being more durable, right. that means we ultimately have to pay ourselves less money True. in terms of warranty. Right, right. So we're able to balance it out that way. But then you were talking about the thin bezels and how it comes down to making thinner and lighter laptops. Right. So this particular manufacturing mm -hmm. technique that we used here of hybridizing these materials. So this is carbon fiber. Okay in the center of all three of these. And it's most evident here. Right. Did, you, did you see this technique? Yeah. This is fiberglass. This, this bit, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And the edges, mm -hmm. because part of what makes carbon fiber such a pain to work with uh, is not that it's expensive. It's very difficult to manufacture. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't bend carbon fiber 90 degrees. It right. just doesn't hold that way. So to make the lip that is necessary for the structural integrity of a laptop, we have to hybridize the materials. Okay. Now, so it's, it's a mix of the carbon fiber and yeah. the, the glass. Yeah. Uh, so it's carbon fiber, yeah. 90 plus percent of the surface area is right. carbon fiber, but they're insets of this fiberglass, right. Right. glass fiber reinforced plastic for the radios, ah, okay. radio antennas, and for the structural lip. Right. And so whenever anybody says, why can't you just make the bezels thinner? Right. It, it requires a complete redesign, which is what we had to do for our X1 carbon. Mm -hmm. So this is an unpainted shell of a new X1 carbon. Mm -hmm. So you can see that we have a slightly different type of material yeah. here, here and here, mm -hmm. here and here. Right. So, you know, this 10, nine, 10 years of expertise we have in hybridizing materials these are glass fiber reinforced plastic okay. like this, but now hybridized into the magnesium shell of the system okay. um, to make radio windows. So here, 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 and here for the regular wireless LAN, right. and here and here for the wireless WAN. That's what let us make the bezels better. better. Thinner, because you, right, you place them differently. Exactly, but that created yet another problem which was that that type of carbon fiber manufacturing with the polyfoam mm -hmm. has worked very well for us for 
eight, nine years. Right. But it has to be due to its properties. Uh, flat, it, flat is not the right word. It has to be the same thickness from side to side. It has to be made in a single sheet. Okay. Uh, and it won't hold compression. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a center sheet from the new X1 Carbon. You feel the difference? This, yeah. Okay. There's a slight bend as well, yeah? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. compressed. Mm -hmm. So that's not foam. That's not poly plastic foam. That's carbon fiber foam. Oh, right. So feel the difference. They're not exactly the same size, but feel the difference in weight. So this we're able to make yeah, it even yeah, lighter, lighter. Yeah, this one's heavier. By substituting polyplastic foam for carbon, carbon fiber, fiber foam. foam. And now we can selectively compress areas to make room for these antennas and to make it a little bit deeper to put the cameras Camera and the microphones that. in the right place and have the space to run the cables and still hit that 16 millimeter uh, thickness target. Oh, it extends yeah. even to the fans. Right. Um, so this is an older type fan mm -hmm. that's found in some of the other ThinkPads. Right. And this is a subtle difference uh, that a user wouldn't really ever see, but we've sort of determined there's a minimum thickness mm -hmm. or minimum thinness uh, at which you can expect a fan to continue to act properly. Right. Like a fan. So this one still works, but... I can see that it's, yeah. But if you think about the middle image of a fan, like a box fan, mm -hmm. Uh, it's got more space, uh, yeah. and it's it, 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 it's a little bulkier as well, yeah. But it's rotating around a central yeah. metal spindle, right? Right. So feel that. Right. That's not significantly different in design to mm. a box fan. It's basically a gyroscope. Yeah. Right. And you try to move it, and you get. Vroom, yeah. Vroom. Yeah. Well, laptops aren't always asleep when mm. people close the lid and put it in their bag, so you get this sort of gyroscopic effect where the fan is torquing around inside its casing. Right. And if it ever gets to the point that the sides of the mechanism inside start rubbing, mm -hmm. then you get metal shavings that yeah. get into the oil and it just will eventually right. destroy the fan. Right. And this is still supportable at this thickness. I mm -hmm. think that's maybe about six or seven millimeters. Okay. But when you get down to four and a half wow. or less, it just doesn't work. So feel that fan. Yeah, it's... It's it's taking much more effort to just you know yeah. to spin and yeah it's smoother it is and it doesn't rock it's because yeah. inside that is a full like three D uh, type structure with uh, three dimensions of oil pressure right it is very very similar to the central bearing on a hard drive it it doesn't rub on itself sides yeah um, and we've been putting these in, in uh, X one carbons now for uh, the last five years. It's, it's a more expensive mm -hmm. type of fan than this, um, but we've we've reduced fan failures uh, essentially to insignificant levels mm -hmm. uh, by spending more money on designing the fan. Ever had a laptop or a, anything that got gunked up with dust? Mm -hmm. Our team looked some years ago at how to solve this problem, and what they determined experimentally was that it isn't generally the case that a lot of dust comes in through the bottom of the laptop and gets stuck in the fan on the way out. Right. It's that all of the air flowing oh, over yeah, these yeah. highly conductive copper veins mm -hmm. set up a static electric charge and then when the fan stops stops, any dust in the vicinity gets sucked back in by static. So this discharges the static, static. electricity okay. off the fan. Um, and we've massively tested that and we've, we've had this uh, anti-static circuit for five years mm -hmm. uh, and our internal failure analysis basically shows that we've reduced uh, failures attributable to dust uh, to well well below one tenth of one percent so about on the vibration the millispec test yeah. what are the most prominent ones like maybe just name a couple of them that are very important when it comes to testing the durability of a thing um, so I think the ones that are the, certainly the most applicable to every user mm -hmm. uh, are things like and these sorry to preface these are tests that have the parameters and conditions set by the US military oh, right. we just have to execute the test to their specifications it, and give the test results to them in order, in many cases, to participate uh, in government or military tenders. Okay. Right? Those are the people who have specific requirements. And there are some companies that also do. Uh, but 
the way we look at it is everyone who buys a pickpick gets the benefit mm -hmm. of the requirements that the government military places upon us. Right. So there's shock and vibration testing. Uh, there's testing for heat, testing for cold, testing for shock between hot and cold. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, humidity testing, altitude testing, uh, dust and sand testing. Uh, and, and I think that's seven or eight. Right. Those are the ones that, that most people uh, benefit from. Absolutely. Whether they know it or not. Yeah. Now there are some more esoteric ones mm -hmm. that are uh, called for in some government bids. Like there's an additional vibration test yeah. that uses a different type of wave vibration that is specific to ships. Right. It's called shipboard vibration testing. Right. Uh, unless you're a navy or yeah. work for a shipping company, that would the difference between that and normal, normal vibration, vibration may not be meaningful to you. Uh, and then for like very, very humid environments, uh, there's also a fungus growth test that we do. Wow. Uh, there's a test for exposure to uh, uh, ultraviolet rays from sunlight. You know, for example, police and fire, people who may keep them outside, in, yeah. uh, or you know, in direct sunlight. Uh, there's one for explosive atmosphere testing. Wow. So unless you're in oil and gas or run a mine, that, that may not be... <laughs> particularly relevant wow. to an end user, but you get the benefit from it. No, so there's 200 internal tests right. mm. and then a, that we do of our own devising. Right, right. Um, and then we do also testing to these uh, uh, 12 military mil spec tests that, that the U.S. government has defined. Okay. Right, so in a way you can look at it and say it's 212.